Hello and welcome to another episode. In today's tutorial, I will be talking about CSS margins. But before we get started, if this video is useful for you or for somebody else that you know, please go ahead and share it with them. That way you're helping somebody else. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to it. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Okay, so let's get started. So to get started with CSS margins, the first thing that I want you guys to do is open w3schools.com. You're going to go to the CSS tab and you're also going to open the web page that we have been working with so far. I already have that open on Visual Studio Code. I have my index.html file and also my style.css um, file here open. And um, I recommend you, if you don't know how to do this, just go back to my previous uh, videos. And in chapter number one, I uh, teach you how to do all this, okay? So getting back to CSS margins. So what is CSS margins? Margins are properties that are used to create space around elements outside of any defined borders. So with CSS, you have full control over the margins. There are properties for setting the margin for each side of an element. Same thing that we saw on CSS borders. You can set up your border from top, right, bottom, and left. Same thing you can do here with CSS margins. But now in human words, let me explain you um, what a margin is. So I have here a quick example that I just created on Adobe Illustrator. And here, as you may know, we have the content, right? Which is, let's say, a paragraph or an H1 tag. Um, you have probably some text inside of uh, your element, right? Now, outside of your element, you will have a border, which is what we saw in our previous this episode. Now, outside of the border, it's what we call the margins. It's the space that you have between the border and the actual window itself. So let's go back to CSS. Now, here, um, you are going to learn how to code this, and I am going to explain you how you can use this by typing it into our Visual Studio code. Um, but before, we want to go ahead and just simply take a look at the values. Some of the values we are going to be taking a look at today will be auto, length, percentage, inherit. So those are just four of them. And um, also, negative values are allowed, right? Um, but we're going to take a look and see the first one, which is actually just going to be the um, well, actually not the first one, but we're going to start with the length, which is going to specify how much is going to be the margin in pixels, points, centimeters, um, you name them. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our code right here. We already have, as you can see, a couple of borders examples that we worked with in our previous chapter. Um, now, to give a margin to each one of them, in fact, what I'm going to do is to just probably work with one of them, just so you can see um, what the margin is going to do to each one. Okay. Okay. So let me explain this, but I am going to be, um, probably racing, uh, all of them and I'm just going to stay with one. So we're only going to stay with border number one, which says this is a border example. And I'm going to erase all the rest of the uh, border style that we gave before. I'm going to save this and I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, now, one thing that I also want to do here is save my HTML content and hit refresh. There you go. So uh, you have the border example and we have a dotted border here. Let me just turn that to be solid instead of uh, dotted. <laughs> okay, so solid will be, and we're gonna still leave the width as thick and the color is gonna be red. Okay, so, Let's go ahead and play around, as I said before, uh, with the first thing, which is going to be the length, okay? So by applying a margin to this, you can go ahead and you can apply the margin, let's say, to the top, okay? So you can say margin top, and then you can say that you want the margin top to be 10 pixels, right? I'm going to save this. We're going to go back to our welcome page and here, as you can see, take a look at, at the distance between the window and the actual element. So I'm going to hit refresh, and now the margin is actually a little bit less. Now we can also go ahead and we can do 100 pixels of margin on top. 
of the uh, of the side of the border between the border and the window. Now we are going to have 100 pixels. So take a look and see what this is going to do. You see how much now is the margin between the window itself, the edge of the window and the actual border of the element. So that's what a margin does. Now we can also go ahead and play around with this. Now here I use margin top, but we can use the margin the same thing or the same way that we were using it um, with borders. We can go ahead and we can shorthand write the code and we can just simply apply 100 pixels to the top. Then we can go ahead and we can say to our code, I want to apply, um, let's say 50 pixels to our right. Then I want to apply 50 pixels, or let's just give 100 pixels also to the bottom. And then finally, I want to apply 100 pixels to the left, right? So now I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to refresh this. And there you go. Now we have 100 pixels to the top. Now to the right, we have 50 pixels. To the bottom, you have 100 pixels, although you cannot notice this because we do not have another content below the first um, element, right? So for now, just take a look at this example like this. And then we have 100 pixels of a margin from the left side, okay? So that's how you use margin with pixels. You can also go ahead and you can change this with percentages. Like I can say, hey, I want this to be 10% as an example, 10%. And if I only just put 10%, and I hit save, this is going to apply 10% of margin from the actual, um, from all the sides, okay? From top, right, bottom, and left. So let's hit refresh, and there you go. As you can see now, we have 10% of margin between each side, okay? Now, you can also go ahead and actually play around with this. You can use points, you can use um, centimeters, whatever you want to use, you can go ahead and actually play around with that. Um, but that's how you use the, the, the value of length to your margins. Now, there is also another value which is called auto, and this is when the browser calculates the margin for you. So if I go ahead and I change this from 10% and I say I want this to be auto, I'm going to save this. Then I go back to my welcome page and I hit refresh. What this is going to do is that it's going to center your um, your box or let's say your, your content, your element, including the border of it, to uh, the center of the page in a horizontal way. So it doesn't center vertically, it'll center this horizontally, okay? Now, I hope that makes sense to you right now, but I, I am going to emphasize on this probably a little bit more when we are actually on the project of building the full website with CSS and HTML. Um, okay, now you can also go ahead and you can use another one. Let's, well, the percentage, I already explained that, which is going to specify the percentage width of the containing element, right? which we already saw when we applied the 10%. Um, and we have inherit. Now inherit, to use that one, what we have to do is create a parent um, tag in here. So we have a paragraph right now, but the parent, um, uh, but the parent, we could say that the parent tag could be the body, but let's go ahead and use a div, a division. And now inside of this division, let's, um, let's say that inside of this division, you have a child. So the parent of this um, p tag is going to be div. So this div, um, I'm going to apply some style to the div so you can actually see a little bit better what I'm talking about here. So to all divs, I am going to apply a border, um, a border style, uh, a border style of dotted and uh, the border width is going to be, let's say 10 pixels. And let's apply a different color. So the border color is going to be blue, okay? Oh, and by the way, so you can actually see um, this in here applied. What I'm going to do is give this div a class also. 
and the class is going to be div. Okay, so let's call this div with its class. Okay, let's call the div with its class. I'm going to hit refresh. Well, I'm going to save this and I'm also going to save my index file and let's hit refresh. Okay, so now as you can see, you have your division and inside of this division, we have the, the parent. Uh, I'm sorry, th this is the parent, the blue, um, the blue border, right? And it has a margin outside of it. And then you have a child inside, which is going to be the paragraph, which is this content right here with a board with a red border. Now to use inherit, what this mean is that the margin should be inherited from the parent element. So what this mean is that this box right here, if we go ahead and we go back to visual studio code and we use the margin as inherit, this is going to inherit the same margin that is applied to our div folder. So if I go ahead and I declare that my margin here is going to be a hundred pixels, then what this is going to do, I'm going to hit by the way, save here and I'm going to refresh. Then what this is going to do is that it's also going to inherit the same margin inside of that parent. So outside, of the div, we have 100 pixels. And inside the same uh, P tag has 100 pixels because it's inheriting the same margin of its dad, okay? So that's what it's doing. So his father has a margin of 100 pixels, the child is gonna have a margin of 100 pixels. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comment section below. And as soon as I read them, I will be more than happy to answer those doubts for you. Okay, so um, real quick, that's what inherit does. And um, one more thing that I do want to explain about, about margins, and we're going to wrap it up here to make this video not that long, is going to be margin collapse. So what is margin collapse? I'm just going to read this, by the way. Um, top and bottom margins of elements are sometimes collapsed into a single margin that is equal to the largest of the two margins. So this does not happen on left and right margins, okay? So it's not gonna happen left or right. This only happens from top and bottom margins. So let me go ahead and explain you an example here. And I'm going to use um, visual, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to use Adobe Illustrator. So let's say that you have here this content and you have some margins in this content. And let's say that your margin bottom of this element, you want this to be margin bottom here is 70 pixels, right? But then let's say that you also have another, another element right here. And the margin top, because this is not gonna be the bottom of it, right? Of the second one, this is gonna be the margin top. The margin top is also, well, it's actually gonna be, let's say um, 40 pixels. So you will say between this element and this element, we probably have 110 pixels of margin. Well, let me tell you that that's incorrect. With margin collapse, what's gonna happen is that um, the, the margin itself from top and bottom between these two elements is gonna be the one that has the highest um, pixels. So instead of here being 110 pixels of distance, it's actually only gonna be 70 pixels of distance. And this is actually gonna be moved a little bit up. Okay, so now let's go ahead and code that out so you can see what I mean about that. So, okay, so we have a div and uh, we have border one. Now what I'm gonna do here is that I am going to apply another div. Okay, I'm going to apply another div and I'm going to give this div two and I'm going to give a class of border two and this is another border example. I'm going to hit save I'm going to hit save and let's go back to our website and I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, so see, this is a border example. It's been added, but it doesn't have any style. So what I'm going to do is copy all this information and I'm simply going to apply the same thing to both borders, okay? So we're going to apply border two and we're going to say div two. I'm going to hit save and now we're gonna hit refresh. Okay, so as you can see, 
Now we do have two contents. Now let's go back and, and, and let's experiment the margin collapse that it's going to happen here. So this div has 100 pixels. This one also has 100 pixels. So obviously the distance between here and here is 100 pixels right now because both of them have the same amount of pixels. But if I go ahead and if I change this to 150 pixels and then I am going to say to change, uh, I'm going to leave the second one as 100 pixels. I'm going to hit save and now you will see what will happen. Check out the distance. Now I'm going to hit refresh and now you see the distance is actually a little bit more. And as you can see also, this is shown now inside of the actual um, elements. Both of the elements were changed. Why? Because, well, the border one now, it's taking, it's inheriting 150 pixels and border two, it's inheriting only 100 pixels, okay, of margin. So obviously by giving more margin, from the window uh, to the actual element, your element is actually shrinking, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Again, if you have questions about margin collapse, make sure to leave them in the comment section below and I will reply that as soon as I can. So in other words, um, I know that this is going to probably be a bit confusing. So I'm what I'm going to do right now is just delete um, the divs, okay? I'm going to delete div one and I'm going to delete div two. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm going to also delete the divisions in here in our HTML code. So it can be a little bit easier for you <laughs> because right now you see something that is also um, affecting the child. And I am only going to show two elements. So this is not complicating stuff up for you. So let's hit save. I'm going to hit refresh. Okay, there we go. So, okay, it has inherit and it's inheriting by the way, um, the parent, which is the body. Okay, so that's why you see it's not almost doing anything right now. But I'm going to change the margin here to 100 pixels. And I am going to change the margin here to, um, let's do, okay. And you know what, to be a little bit more clear, I'm also going to affect only here the margin bottom. And here I am going to affect the margin top so that you can see when collapse happen, when the margin collapse happen, it's, you know, it's a little bit easier for you. So here I'm going to give 100 pixels and to this second one, I'm also gonna give 100 pixels. Okay, now I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna hit refresh. So between those two, now we have 100 pixels of distance. What happens if I go ahead and I increase the second one to 150 pixels? According to margin collapse, if I do that, now there is not going to be 100 pixels of distance. It's only going to, it's actually going to expand a little bit more to 150. Okay, so I'm going to hit refresh and boom, there you go. Now we have 150. Now if I go ahead and I change this to be 50 pixels and this one um, to be 50 pixels and I hit save, you will say, oh, I have, a I have 100 pixels here. Remember that no, according to margin collapse, th there is only 50 pixels of distance between here and here, okay? Not 100 because it's collapsing both of them. Um, now, if I go ahead and I increment this to 100 pixels, you'll say, oh, now we're going to have 150 pixels. No, we are only going to have 100 pixels because um, according to margin collapse, we are actually only having the distance of the highest amount of margin between either margin bottom or top. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit refresh and there you go. Now we don't have 50 pixels, we have 100 pixels. Okay, so I hope all this makes sense to you and it's a little bit easier now. Um, again, if you don't understand, leave your questions in the comment section below. So that's it for this video today, everyone. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed to it, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as well, if you find this video useful for you or for somebody else, don't forget to share it. And as always, remember that you can always ask Lixie. Bye everyone and see you again in the next episode.